Hi everyone, it's MJ and in this video we're going to be talking about Daniel chapter 4 verse 33. Now, why am I talking about this verse? I was at gym earlier this morning and my personal trainer was talking to me about werewolves in the Bible and I was like, I don't think there are werewolves in the Bible and we got out his phone and he started searching for it and he was like, look, 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 yeah, okay, it wasn't a werewolf but this guy turns into an eagle. So we're going to read this text and we're going to discuss some of the various, I guess, ways to, to explain this particular verse. Because yes, there are some people who are of the view that Nebuchadnezzar actually turns into a monster. And then there's other people who are like, no, 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 this is just a metaphor because he spent so much time in the wilderness that he ended up looking like a a monster so we're going to read the text we're going to go through it we're going to discuss it and i'm also going to look at a little bit of a jungian take on this verse so something that's not necessarily you know in the internet we type in explain this bible verse and there's bible websites and they all have the various explanations by the various people i'm also going to introduce a jungian one so stay tuned uh but let's first read through the verse put it in context and then start just unpacking this very strange thing that happens in the Bible. So Daniel chapter 4 verse 33, it says, Immediately what had been said about Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled. He was driven away from the people, a grass like the ox. His body was drenched with the dew of heaven until his hair grew like the feathers of an eagle and his nails like the claws of a bird. So the first thing that I want to just mention is because we're using words like, you know, it, as, uh, these are similes. So the Bible's not necessarily saying that Nebuchadnezzar turned into an eagle. They're saying his body was transformed like an eagle. And if we look at this passage, some people see it as, well, the translation I'm looking at, it says seven times. Um, a lot of people point towards this being times being a year. So for seven years, Nebuchadnezzar was, was out in the wilderness. Some see it as seven months, seven weeks, seven days. Um, like I said, many translations say seven times, and times is open to, to interpretation. But if it was seven years, it would make sense that, yeah, if you don't bath, shave, or, or take care of yourself for seven years, you are going to look a little bit like a, like a monster. Um, What's happened? Why, why does uh, Nebuchadnezzar undertake this, this transformation? Well, if we had to back up, very quick overview of, of the verse. Nebuchadnezzar, he's the king of Babylon. He's having some dreams. He calls in Daniel. He's like, yo, can you explain this little dream for me? Uh, in the dream, he, there's this huge, beautiful tree, and then it gets chopped down. And Daniel's like, dude, you are the tree. And unless you repent of your pride, um, the Lord is going to basically cut, cut you down. Um, Nebuchadnezzar is like, that's great, but I'm the king of Babylon. You know, it's like one of the most powerful cities of the time. And what we see is 12 months later, he's walking on the roof and he's telling himself, wow, look how great I am. I've made this amazing kingdom. And then God's like, well, you know what I said in the dream? That's going to happen now. And we see that that he gets humbled. And this is something that, that Nebuchadnezzar even, I mean, to go straight to the, the thing, it says, um, it says, at the same time that my sanity was restored, my honor and splendor returned to me, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, we go. And those who walk in pride, he is able to, to humble. So Nebuchadnezzar himself realizes that this whole tr becoming insane um, is part of this process to, to humble himself because he had too much pride. He thought he was, you know, the most amazing thing out there. Now, when we look at some of the commentaries on this verse, um, a lot of scholars like to point to, to various mental diseases. And there are these diseases that occur when people go insane. They're something that are still happening to this day. That's why we've got mental asylums where people can go, go crazy. Um, there's stories of this person on this island of Sardinia who believed that they were a deer. They ran away from their family and they started eating grass like, like the deers. So it's not like this is... It, it is unusual, but it has occurred elsewhere in, in the world where people have gone gone crazy. What is interesting in, in this particular case is that, like I said, we've got other scholars who, who talk about, no, that he actually turned into a, a monster. Um, they refer to this guy called Her Herodas. Herodas. 
can't speak Greek, so probably butchering that name. Um, Herodotus spoke about that there were these stories in the Scythian. I should learn how to speak. In one of these provinces in in Europe, uh, where people believed that at some times people would go and basically become like a wolf for a certain period of time before coming back and though they say that this greek guy wasn't like he's like that sounds a little bit incredible like maybe that didn't happen um there were still these these myths of people becoming animalistic and then returning it's probably where the myth of the werewolf came from and and it's interesting like i say my my gym instructor who i was training with this morning you know when he recalled this verse he recorded like a werewolf um and it was only on us reading that we see that it's it's eagle and and i want to maybe talk a little bit about about the eagle because what we know is that the eagle is a symbol of authority. Think of the Americans, they've got the, the eagle as their emblem. A lot of the European crescents, they have the eagle. You know, the, the eagle is a sign of, of authority. It's kind of like it's hovering up in the sky. It's got the surveillance. It looks down on everyone. It is this, this powerful figure. And we see that Nebuchadnezzar was like an eagle in the sense that he was the king he was the most powerful thing even at this moment he's on the roof looking down at everyone so it's quite interesting how he turns into or the the monster form is described as having eagle like uh, feathers because i mean if you're gonna there's so many other things you could have kind of done it could have been like long hair like a lion or could have made him look like a monkey or you know like like all these other animal imagery could have been used yet they use the eagle one and they even re, uh, reinforce it when they say that the nails grow very very long like a bird's claw so the eagle it's it's an interesting one but this is where I want to maybe talk about about Jung. So I'm busy reading this book. Uh, it's it's a bunch of lectures that uh, Jung gave on a story that Nietzsche wrote called Thus Spoke Zarathustra, and in it Jung speaks a lot about this concept of of inflation, and he believed that Nietzsche went insane or became crazy because he experienced something known as inflation. Now let me quickly read to you what what inflation is so it says Carl Jung defined inflation as an unconscious physical condition an expansion of the personality beyond its proper limits by identification with the persona or with an archetype or in a pathological cases with a historical or religious figures it produces an exaggerated sense of one's self-importance and is usually compensated by feelings of inferiority and you know Jung's comments about inflation are concerned with identification of the ego and consciousness, and you can go read up on the rest on that psychological stuff. But essentially, think of inflation as excessive pride, thinking you're the best thing ever. And Jung says that why this is dangerous from a psychological point of view is because it could lead to insanity. You know, you start feeling so superior, um, something's going to happen and it's going to compensate it by these feelings of inferiority that are going to drive you insane. So this Jung makes this, and Jung as a, as a doctor, who spent a lot of time with crazy people, that was his specialty. He kind of reads this Zarathustra book, and especially where Zarathustra is like, oh, God is dead. Um, he says at that moment Nietzsche made this profound statement thought that oh look he's uncovered the truth of the universe you know the demise of a deity and it was this inflated sense of you know I'm so smart that would eventually lead to to his demise and, and his insanity and we kind of see a parallel happening here with with Nebuchadnezzar it's not like oh one day he woke up and he was insane it's while he's walking on the roof and while he's boasting about look how great I am I have made Babylon into this huge empire you know I'm I'm really really awesome and at that moment Nebuchadnezzar essentially is experiencing this inflation that Jung speaks about and kind of goes goes crazy and it's it's incredible that like I say the eagle is kind of being used because even in Babylonian um, mythology you've got Murdoch who's you know their their kind of version of God and he's got wings like an eagle and like I say in eagle has got all these spiritual uh, significance and you know authority and being king and divine and a messenger of the gods and all these kind of things and Nebuchadnezzar probably thought of himself of being up at that level and it's, it's weird he almost transforms 
into what he thinks he is, you know, this, this eagle symbol. However, this transformation is not as glorious as, as one would have expected, or, or at least what he would have expected. Instead, he becomes the, the animal that an eagle actually is. We see that he has to, you know, people don't want to be around him. He goes and he lives um, with the animals for seven years. But we know that Nebuchadnezzar is incredibly powerful because after these seven times, and let's say it's seven years, when he comes back and he realizes that pride was the, the cause of it, you know, his ego reduces back and the, the inflation has, has passed and he's, you know, he's sane again, we see that he's able to resume his power. And that's something I find fascinating. I mean, we look at Donald Trump, he's been out of power for like not even seven months now and really people in in his own party are kind of like have forgotten about him and like oh we're not going to look up to him and respect him kind of thing nebuchadnezzar he's been out for seven years he steps back everyone's like whoa the king has has returned um of course nebuchadnezzar has has learned his lesson he's learned that wow okay being too, having too much pride is incredibly dangerous and he praises the Lord for, for humbling him and restoring him back. So I guess at the end of the day, the meaning here is one that we've come across plenty of times in the Bible. And that is that pride is bad and that it's good to be humble and yeah, not allow inflation or the ego to swell because what occurs um, isn't necessarily that pleasant. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you've got any thoughts or comments, uh, let me know in the comment section below. And of course, this is just one aspect of, of chapter 4, verse 33. I'm sure there are other explanations, and I really do encourage you to, to read and you know find some interesting things. And yeah, let us know in the comment section below if you've got any alternative arguments. Um, and yeah, let's have a and let's have an awesome discussion about this. But until then, I'll see you guys soon. And also, yeah, let me know if there's another Bible verse that you want me to, to chat about. Keep well. Cheers.